Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing some no line watercoloring and I'm going to keep the video footage in real time. I'm not going to speed it up. So this is going to be a great learning video for anyone who's trying out no line watercoloring or even if you just want to see how someone does this technique. I'm going to be showing you that in detail. So I'm stamping my images in antique linen distress ink. This is the preferred ink color that I use and and I use it because it's a nice pale ink and for the most part it does disappear as you paint. Now I did just re-ink my ink pad here and so it's a little bit darker than usual. It's a little darker than I would prefer usually but it still looks great even if some of the lines don't disappear completely. The stamp set I'm using is from Trinity Stamps. This is the Spring Fling Floral uh, stamp set and I really like these images um, for a couple of reasons. The first one is they're on the smaller side and I like that because um, it's not quite as time consuming when you're practicing the image from beginning to end and also it gives you a chance to try out some really small detailed painting. You'll notice I'm using a very, very tiny brush. This is a Escada Prado brush. It's the size zero round. And I wanted to show the, kind of the difference between this brush and one that I'll use here in a minute, because this one is very small. And it's a, a great way to help control the amount of water that you're using. So if any of you are having trouble where you just seem to have too much water on your painting, maybe switch to a smaller brush because just by the nature of it being smaller, it won't hold as much moisture. So I was enjoying how I was able to get into those little tiny details, but then I moved up to a size two brush. So this is a size two brush. You can see how it just puts out a little bit more paint. I was comfortable with the size two brush and so I decided to go with that. But if any of you are struggling with controlling the amount of water on your painting, especially when it comes to small images, I would really encourage you to try the next size down in whatever brush you prefer. So the paints I'm using today, that I talk about those for a minute, they are from American Crafts. This is the Paper Fashion Basic Set. And I've been using this one for a couple weeks now and I've really enjoyed the color selection. This yellow shade is straight from the pan. It's not mixed with any other colors. And I'm, and I'm doing just an initial color layer and concentrating that color coming from the center of the flower or right when some petals in the back meet up with the petals in the front. So I'm just adding a little bit of that shading as I go along here. Once I have the entire flower painted in that one color, I'm gonna let it dry for just a few minutes. And then I'm going to come in with an orange shade. Now this orange shade was mixed. I used a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, I'm just trying to get a, almost more of a coral shade, a more coral orange shade. And I'm going to paint this flower in the exact same way, but layer this orange color on top. There are some spots where I don't take that orange shade all the way to the very end of the petal. And I wanna let some of that yellow that's on the first layer kind of shine through that orange that I'm putting on top. So um, I'm adding just that full strength of color right there at the center of the flower. And then I'm going to kind of clean off my brush in my water and dab off the brush so I don't have quite as much water on the brush. I just want a little bit. And then I'm going to almost let the bristles of the brush massage that color and kind of stretch it out to the very end of that petal. And that's going to keep that concentrated color at the center of the flower and allow me to pull that orange near the outer edge of the flower. So this whole process is very time consuming. Um, I, that's why I decided to do smaller images today because it can be very time consuming. So it's, it's a matter of just being patient with yourself and sticking, sticking in there with it. Um, you'll eventually get to the end of your painting. Um, some of the things I like to do while I'm painting, I listen to podcasts, I listen to audiobooks, or maybe just some music, maybe have a movie on or something. I find painting and coloring really relaxing like this. And um, I'm, Thought I'd mention my friend Kathy's coloring challenge. Um, she does this challenge a few times a year. I mentioned it in a video a few videos back. Um, it's the daily marker 30 day coloring challenge. 
And um, basically, it's just to encourage people to do a little bit of coloring every day for 30 days, whether it's coloring for five minutes or coloring for five hours. It doesn't matter. Um, just her, she encourages you to do a little bit of coloring every day. And I really find it therapeutic. Um, Kathy talks about how um, it can reduce blood pressure and it's a stress reliever, things like that. And I absolutely agree. I find painting like this um, very, very enjoyable, especially when I'm doing no line painting and it's just more time consuming. Um, I kind of, kind of go into a zone and just keep painting. So if you've never tried no line watercoloring or, or even with markers or any other coloring medium, um, give it a try. It's It can be a little bit daunting at first, but once you've done it a few times, you really get the hang of it, and it's um, it can be really relaxing. So on this one, I put that blue shade a little too close to the end of the, the leaf there, put a little water on there, and then I'm drying my brush off a little bit so that I can use my brush to sop up some of that paint and then kind of walk to that color back a little bit. So now I'm using more of the yellow ochre shade that's in the paint, in the paint palette. And I'm using the same technique I did before, concentrating that color down at the base of that leaf and then bringing in a little bit of water to help stretch out that color all the way to the end of the leaf. While it's still wet, I did drop in some more of this green shade. And I'm gonna kind of extend that out a little bit, kind of dab my brush in there, try to get it to move. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit more of that tealish blue shade. And that's just going to um, give a little bit more color variation to this very large leaf. And I actually painted both of the large leaves the same way, using the same colors, and I really love how they turned out. You'll notice I skipped that edge of the leaf that's folded up. I'm gonna let the main area dry first, and then I'll come back and paint the edge of the leaf once everything's dry. For this second flower, I'm using the same technique I did on the kind of corally orange flower, where I bring in one color as a base layer. I'm using this bright pink shade as a base layer, I'm going to paint every single petal this same pink color, and I'm going to concentrate that color at the very inside of each petal. Think about where the petal actually attaches to the, to the bud of the flower, to the stem. That's where you want the darkest color. So I have all of that pink covering that entire flower. I'm gonna take a little break from the flower and finish painting that leaf. Bringing in just a little bit of that green shade and then extending it out from the edge. I don't want a whole lot of color on this because it is kind of rolled up. The leaf edge is rolled up, so I want it to be a little bit brighter than that inside area. And after I painted um, both of those leaves, I returned to the flower. Now I'm gonna bring in more of a red shade, and this is going to intensify the color on the flower and give it a little bit more uh, saturated color. So I really like to do this when I'm painting flowers or most anything, I like to have at least two layers of color. And this is going to help give it depth and dimension and it also gives you a little bit of variation. So um, this one is a little more evident where there's two colors. I've got that pink and then more into that red. So for the final flower, I'm gonna move on here in a minute. For the final flower, I'm going to start with that same pink color that I started on this flower. And by just changing the color that I use on top as my second layer, it's going to change the overall look of the flower. So I painted all around, I kind of skipped over to every other leaf so I could keep moving while letting everything dry. And I did the same idea where I bring in that concentrated color at the interior of the petal and then get my paintbrush wet and come back and extend that color moving out toward the end of the petal. I brought in a little bit of yellow to the center of the flower and I also brought in some purple. I started bringing in this purple shade, which I did mix. I took the purple from the palette and I mixed it with a little bit of the pink that I'd already painted with, just so it toned back that purple a little bit. I brought in a little bit of brown into the center of the flower and kind of extended that out, covering that entire yellow area. Um, I just didn't want the yellow to be quite so bright. And this is when I decided that I wanted to bring in a little bit of darkness right around where the center of the petal meets, or the center of the flower meets the petals. I also brought in more of that purple shade. 
effect. This is the, the full strength of the regular purple from the palette. This is going to add a little bit of depth to the edges of that, uh, at the center of the flower. After everything was dry to finish off the flowers, I took a white jelly roll pen. This is a number five jelly roll pen, so it's the smallest version of the white jelly roll pens. And I did that in both centers of the flowers. And then for this red flower, I mixed up kind of a brownish black shade and just drew in those center areas. So I don't have the dies that coordinate with this stamp set, so I'm going to fussy cut using some scissors. The scissors that I prefer are these Cutter B scissors from EK Success. They have a non-stick coating on them, so if you ever have to cut anything um, that has adhesive on it, you can use these scissors as well, and um, they won't stick as much. But I prefer these scissors because they're small, they're sharp, and I can really maneuver around and get really detailed images cut out. So I cut out all four leaves and all three flowers, and then I'm going to set these aside while I do some dry embossing with the Marilyn stencil from Simon Says Stamp. I'm using my Gemini Junior machine, so I'm going to take out the magnetic shim and replace that with this rubber shim, or I, I think it's an embossing shim, or I'm not, what the both they, I'm not sure what they call it, but it's the really flexible rubber t uh, shim. And I put the paper next to the rubber and then the stencil on top, and then I put that cutting pad right there. I'm gonna run through my Gemini Junior machine, and then when I remove everything, the stencil has been pressed into the cardstock, and I have cool, really cool texture. So this is some Nina Solar White uh, cardstock. This is just the 80 pound version, and I love that really subtle texture. I'm gonna trim it down so it's just shy of a regular card front, and then I prepped my card base. So I scored it at five and a half to create a top folding card. And then I adhered that dry embossed piece. This is gonna go right over top of the center of my card and just have it centered right on the front of the card base. I then arranged the flowers and leaves on this card. I'm actually not going to put a greeting on this card because um, I want to re, you know, kind of save it for later down the road when I might need a, a card. And I don't know the exact type of card it will be. It could be a sympathy card. It could be a birthday card. Um, if I want to, I can add a greeting later. But for now, I'm keeping this without any greeting. I like to have some cards like this on hand just so that I can customize the card to whatever I need it for. So I use some foam adhesive and also some more of that Tombow Extreme adhesive just to adhere all of the leaves and the flowers down. And then that finishes the card for today. I love the texture um, of both the water coloring and also that dry embossing. And I like how everything is arranged and it's just a really simple card. Thanks so much for watching today. You can get, get all of the supplies that I use today at the links down below in the video description. Thank you so much for shopping through those links. It helps support my YouTube channel and my blog and helps me bring three videos to you every week. Once again, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys on Monday for a brand new Make a Card Monday video.